The Mount Zion Baptist Church is a word-centered ministry designed to evangelize the lost at any cost, equip and empower the people of God, and provide holistic ministry to our community as well as the world. Seeking to minister to the total person, we are a multi-ethnic, multicultural ministry impacting the world in which we live with the uncompromising message of Jesus Christ. Committed to the spirit of excellence, we are striving to become an oasis of hope within the Nashville community by promoting and providing education, awareness, as well as financial independence. We believe that God must be worshiped in spirit and truth. We embrace freedom in worship because the word says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Our foundation is the word of God and we believe it in its entirety. We believe we can do what it says we can do, be who it says we can be and have what it says we can have. Praise the Lord, everybody. We serve an amazing God. We serve a grateful God. Every grateful heart that knows all the glory belongs to him. Put your hands on it right here. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. 
for another car, another house, but I just need a worshiper to go a little deeper and ask for his glory, ask for his anointing, ask for more of his presence. I need a worshiper that's really hungry for the things of God.
Beloved, how many know today that you love God with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul? And so as we gather here today, the song says, God, guess what? And I will always, always, that neither height nor death, things present, nor things to come will what? Separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And I don't know about you on this morning, but I recognize had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, I wouldn't even be here on today. But I'm so grateful for those two twins from heaven, grace and mercy. I don't think you, I think you missed that on this morning. If anything you should be grateful on this morning is for grace and mercy. See, the definition of grace and mercy, grace is God giving you what you don't even deserve. You didn't deserve to be here on this morning, but God gave it to you anyway. But then there's mercy. God holding back what you do deserve. We deserve to be dead on this morning, sleeping in hell. But God saw fit enough to touch us with a finger of love to wake us up this morning. So when you lift up your hands on this morning, you ought to just acknowledge God had it not been for you, I should have been dead. I could have been dead. But Lord, you made a way out of no way. So if we connect across the aisles on this morning, grab your neighbor. As Minister Nolan is coming on this morning, grab your neighbor. Squeeze that hand recognize first of all that you're touching a miracle you're touching a survivor tell your neighbor guess what if I made it you can make it tell your other neighbor if I made it you can make it but then recognize squeeze that hand again that as you squeeze life into that hand somebody needs it on this week somebody needs to know that the Lord is gonna make a way out of no way on this week so as we go into prayer on this morning, let God know how much you love him. Amen. God, first and foremost, we come in this place, in this presence right now to say thank you. God, we thank you that you woke us up this morning. God, we thank you that you started us on our way. God, we thank you right now for the activities of our limbs. God, we thank you right now for the past week that we just went through, oh God. God, we know that it was a struggle. It was a hard week, but God, you saw fit to let us see it through. And you let us make it here to this place on today, oh God. And for that, we say thank you. God, we thank you for the doctor's report, Father God, because we know that's not the report we'll believe, but we'll believe the report of the Lord. God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for everything that you've done for us, oh God. God, we ask right now that you come into this place and you move like you never moved before, oh God. Shift like you never shift before, oh God. Deliver like you've never delivered before, oh God. God, we come right now expecting miracles. We come right now expecting signs, oh God. And we come right now expecting wonders, oh God. So God, I want you to do what you do best and you be God and God alone and God all by yourself. God, come in right now and shift like you've never shift before. God, open our hearts, oh God, as we get ready to hear a word from which comes from you, oh God. Bless the man of God in the name of Jesus, oh God that the word that he's going to preach and come forth will be able to bless us in this place, oh God. And for that, God, we say thank you. For that, God, we give your name the honor. And for that, God, we give your name the praise. And it's in your darling son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, come on and put your hands together as you take your seats. As we get ready to receive our baptismal candidates on today, how many know that they're glad that they're saved on today? Oh, come on. How many know they're thankful for the blood on today? Let us receive Elder Black as she comes. Amen. Amen.
Ashanti Mason Chambers. Beloved, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Brianna Embry. Beloved, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Brianna Holland. Beloved, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ashley Jackson. Beloved, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lanisha Matthews. Beloved, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Michael Tony. Beloved, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Montreal Wells. Beloved, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Deshaun Wells. Beloved, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Keandre Wells. Beloved, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, Mount Zion, let's celebrate the souls that we baptize on today. Unto God be the glory.
praise everybody. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him praise. He's worthy of all the glory. Now somebody just said you can't stop praising him. You just said it. I didn't say it. You just said you can't stop praising him. So I'm going to give you 60 more seconds just to prove it. I'm going to give you 60 more seconds to prove it. That's what I'm talking about right there. Power in that name. Glory. You want to lose your mind just at the mention of the name. Just at the mention of the name. You wait on something to happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. For the Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. That's why that thing you can say it all the time. When you're sick, say Jesus. When you're broke, say Jesus. When they're talking about you, say Jesus. Oh! Ah, see? Tell somebody on your road, if I gotta praise them by myself, it's just gonna be me there. It's just gonna be me up in here. Giving God the glory for that name that is above every name. Every knee shall bow. All right. Oh, my God.
bless him now. Come on, let's bless him now. Come on, let's bless him now. Oh, my God. You, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God is, God is so awesome. He's so amazing. We give him all the glory. We give him all the praise. This, is, this doesn't just happen by accident. This happens when there's a spirit of expectancy in the house. This happens when people come to church expecting God to do something they've been praying about, believing God for. We welcome you in this place today. We thank you for sharing with us today and all of you around the world. Maybe you're streaming in, Facebook Live, and Mount Zion anywhere, wherever you're watching from the app, wherever you are on the planet, Mount Zion, help me welcome all of those who are sharing with us. You're, you're with us right now. We can feel your presence. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we want to just say welcome to you. You are family to us, and we thank God for your presence. If it's your first time at Mount Zion, we just want to put something in your hand to let you know how much we appreciate you being here. You don't have to say anything, no special announcement or speech you have to give. Just simply stay in, and our ushers are gonna bring you some information about our church. Thank God for you. Come on, Mount Zion, let's thank God. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you so much for being here today. We welcome today. We thank God for Bishop Lonnie Hosley, who has come to shadow me this weekend, and all the way from Portland, Oregon. Would you help me thank God for this man of God? We also welcome today, amen. We appreciate, amen. Uh, so grateful to have uh, Lady Tanya Twyman with us. She's the wife of our uh, Mid-Atlantic Regional Bishop, Lanier Twyman. Let's thank God for her, amen. And amen, we appreciate all who are sharing today and uh, we, we're just grateful i'm thankful to god uh just for his goodness and you know i could just go down this list i'm just so full to see the spirit of god speak in such a powerful way all day long and to know what you are what god is going to do in your life is about to be crazy awesome and i'm telling you you don't want to miss it i'm telling you there is a reason why the atmosphere is so thick today i'm telling you because that's something that's going to happen in your life today amen um i'm just kind of got messed up here just thinking about all this but i want you to to know that we are uh, our prayer call that is normally on on tuesday mornings this week this week we ask you to get ready for the prayer call monday night at 9 p.m we're doing a special prayer call monday at 9 versus tuesday at noon tuesday at 7 rather i'll be in the air won't be able to get to the prayer call so i want to do it tomorrow night to make certain I get your week started out right. So make certain that you join us on Periscope. Follow me on Periscope. Follow us on social media if you're not following us. It's Joseph Walker 3. On all platforms, make sure you follow. And I hope you do that. Instagram, Periscope, follow. We really would appreciate that. This Wednesday, we just got out of a series, and that series was entitled Don't Waste Your Time. And I'm excited this Wednesday because one of our spiritual sons is coming home. I invited him to come back. We sent him away to his daughter church in Oakland, California. And guess what? This Wednesday, Tyron Carter is coming home to minister right here at all three services. And y'all, Ty is really anointed. I want y'all to come and support him this Wednesday. It's going to be a tremendous blessing. And we're grateful to God. If there are some women in the house today, I want you to make some noise if there are some women in the house. Well, we got something for you. It starts this weekend, Friday, Saturday. We want you to be a part of it. And Princess Calvin is coming now. Amen to share with you. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Walker. Y'all want to get a little bit more dope for me. Look, I've been hyped since 4 a.m. Up by myself, talking to the Lord. This Friday, this Friday, October the 11th, the women... It's a ministry here at Mount Zion Church. We're having a conference. It's going to be so dope. And we're going to have our swag on. Confident woman swag is what we're going to have. Serving women. Amazing grace by God. Amen. 
I need you all to be in the house. Don't forget that this is our ministry's opportunity to partner with the Hope Clinic. They're a clinic that serves underprivileged pregnant women, and we have bins in the atrium, but if you're not able to bring something today, please bring something on Friday. Look, we need you in the place. We can't do this by ourselves. We have this ministry. All of us as women, all of us as men, we have to support each other and hold up the arms of our leader because he needs us to be in position in the kingdom to do the things that God has called us to do. So again, we'll see you on Friday. I got my eyes on all y'all watching you, you too. Look out. It's she awesome. We thank God for her. And then, of course, y'all, it's going to be crazy. And then, of course, all the women, I want you to also join us again, as she said, uh, on the 24th as well, as I get a chance to pour into you on Women's Night Out. It's going to be awesome. That's going to happen right here. And then the men in the house. Where are the men? Make some noise. Men. Mount Zion, I'm telling you what. I got you. Men, it's on. It's happening. Man cave. Me and you. No phones, no Snapchat, conversations with real men, talking about real issues. It's happening at J Street. I want you to come. Ladies, send the men in your house. I'll send them back a better man. I promise you. I promise you. It's going to be a blessing. Nobody going to come back. Won't be no pillow talk after this one. It's going to be just action. Amen. Men are leaving that doing some stuff. We're not talking about it. We're going to be about it. So it's going to be awesome. And I'm grateful to God. So many other announcements. I'm just going to let the announcement period handle the announcements on our videos. But I want to thank God. We are... Uh, today, uh, this is the first Sunday of the last quarter of 2019, meaning this is a great season for us, and I'm thankful to God for all that he is doing. Anybody glad to just be able to be here today? Come on. We are today, as we prepare our hearts, amen, to worship God in giving, we today are grateful to God for the opportunity to consistently be generous to God, and we thank God for your consistent generosity. We do, again, want you to remember, amen, uh, Project 1866, we are literally two months and two weeks away, amen, from our victory lap together, and we believe, amen, without a doubt, that God is going to do what he promised he was going to do. We need your help. We've got a $2.3 million gap. We believe God's going to let us close that gap over the next two months and two weeks. And I believe that it's already in the house. I really do. And all those of you who watch us online, we appreciate your generosity. If you need a pledge card, you say, Bishop, I understand what you're trying to do. I see the vision. I'm all in. That's why we wear the shirts all in because we know it's about the next generation. It's about us putting something in place for the next generation. Let's do it together. Thank you for taking a pledge card. Help me thank God for those taking pledge cards today. I appreciate you. Those of you online, if God leads you to support this, we need your help and we thank God. Amen. I don't know how God's going to do it. I just believe he's going to do it by faith. I got enough intercessors believing God for that. So we are pray grateful to God. Listen, we want today, amen, to prepare our hearts the way to give. You can text to give. That information is on the screen right now. You're tied, you're offering, and then of course we're going to pray after that for your led to give. Father, we thank you. We bless you for the privilege we have to give. I pray blessings be upon every household, every family. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Every heart said, Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. Podcasts are great to listen to while at the gym or in a coffee shop. We have audio and video podcasts available on www.mtzionanywhere.org. Or go to the iTunes store, search Bishop Joseph Walker III podcast. That is with the Roman numeral three. Wednesday is our midweek services to study God's word. I can't wait to see what's on tap this week. Join us at noon, 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. Hey guys, it's Larry here with your prison ministry. Did you know there are guys in prison who have pledged to give $18.66 out of their hard-earned money? They get paid $30 a month, but they have pledged to give $18.66. Now, think about that. If guys that are incarcerated can give $18.66, I challenge you to give as well $18.66. Because if there's a blessing in the loaf, there's a blessing in the crumbs. I prove it to you. 
Jesus himself, he said, take up everything and waste nothing when he fed the multitude, the multitude of people. And at the end, they took up 12 baskets full. We cannot waste nothing in this season. Let's take up the 12 baskets full to make the 1866 project a blessing. October is going to be a great month here at the Mount. We have activities for everyone, like the Women's Ministry Conference, the Confident Woman, or Women's Night Out. And while the women are all out talking about she sheds, all us men will be hanging out, man cave style. Or maybe you want to become a homeowner. Come out Tuesday, October 29th for a free workshop. You can see all the Mount Zion events and register on the app or online at mtzionnashville.org. Remember, download today's sermon notes at the Mount Zion app or ask an usher for a paper copy. Thank you for choosing to worship with us here at the Mount.
Father, thank you right now for your word in this place. Speak your word, O oh God, that we might receive this revelation and walk in a new level of destiny. Let somebody's life be changed forever now. In Jesus' name, amen. We're talking this month from a series entitled Perspective. Perspective. Haggai chapter 2, verses 2, verses 3 through 9. Who was left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? How do you see it now? In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel says the Lord, be strong, Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. And be strong, all the people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. For thus said the Lord of hosts, once more in a little while I will shake heaven and earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Mm. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former says the Lord of hosts and in this place I will give peace says the Lord of hosts tell somebody your ladder will be greater you may be seated in the presence of the Lord today change is something that is difficult for even those of us who are saved often to embrace change puts a demand upon the normalcy of your life. Change challenges the comfort zones that we find ourselves in. Change pushes us out of places of apathy and forces us into places of productivity. Change brings a level of anxiety in our lives, forces us to attempt to resist change in quite creative ways. But change is inevitable. And no matter how you attempt to resist it, it shall come to pass. The extremes that people go to to try to prevent change from coming are often comical and frugal at the same time. Isn't it amazing how people will dye their hair in order to prevent the inevitable? It is amazing. People will spend hundreds of dollars on garments in order to try to prevent gravity from doing what gravity inevitably is going to do. Change is going to happen with or without you. And it is also quite interesting when you look at how people compromise and their values reduce their standards and make irrational decisions in an attempt to remain stagnant to be left alone in the place of comfort, not knowing that God's desire is to shift us into different dispensations. Yes. God always moves us from glory to glory yes. because God is a progressive God. Everything tied to God is always moving. Yes. It is always going higher and higher and higher. Yes. And so the change that God brings into our lives is often providentially navigated into our circumstances in order that everything might come into proper alignment whether we want it to or not. That God does what he has to do to get us prepared for what he's about to take us. Today, I want you to hear this word because the future really does belong to those who are open to positive change. The theologian Zorin Kierkegaard says that life can only be understood backwards but it must be lived forward. You have to understand that if you are willing to move forward, you never take the opportunity to move forward in your life. If you never do that, then you're constantly living in rewind. There has to be some intentionality in moving with God and some perspective on what God is doing. Today, I want you to hear this word because it is about perspective. It is about you seeing what other people may not see. 
It's about you understanding what God is up to when it looks like your life may be torn to pieces and things may not be happening the way you think they should happen. You need to know that even when it looks like you're down to nothing, God is yet up to something. This is a powerful story. It is a story about the nation of Israel, the people of God who had now been promised a new temple. They are three weeks into the building of a new temple. And God speaks to them through the prophet Haggai. Haggai has been commanded to bring them a revelation of hope. To remind them that the God who was with them in the first temple would also be with them in the next. But that God was going to upgrade their experience. That God was going to make sure that the latter was greater than the former. You see, people of God, this occurs during a significant time in Israel's history. A time in which they would be celebrating the festival of booths. The festival of booths was recorded in Leviticus 23, 42 through 43. It was that moment when God would literally bring them out of Egypt and remind them that while they were in Egypt, God said, I want you to celebrate what I did when I brought you out. Because in Leviticus chapter 23, God reminds them that when I brought you out, I made you dwell for seven days. And all who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths. And when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I want to remind them that I am God. You see, the I amness of God is very powerful because that is the exact same thing that God told Moses when Moses inquired of who should tell, who should he tell Pharaoh sent him. And God says, I am that I am. The I amness of God is really dealing with the immutability or unchangingness of God that God says, even though your situation may be changing, I am the same who I've always been. Don't get nervous if things are shifting around you because God says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so as a result here, the prophet Haggai must speak the word of the Lord to the people of God to remind them that God is keeping covenant with them. And though your temple has been destroyed in 586 BCE and now you are three weeks into building this new temple, please understand that the glory that's about to hit your house is going to change everything. That what God is about to deposit in this season is going to make you forget about all of the pain, all of the struggle that you had in that past season. Somebody here is going to get this in just a minute because I need you to understand that God it's about to blow your mind that what you're on your way to, all the things you've gone through is now about to make sense because when God gets you there, you're going to be thanking God for every single thing you had to go through on your way there. And so he then raises a series of rhetorical questions to in particular that uh, of note and he speaks to a remnant of people because he says that there has to be a remnant. Who remembers the house or the temple in its former glory? To remember the temple in its former glory and to yet be alive, to hear the words of the prophet Haggai would make those in that place about 70 years old or older, which means they have a different perspective. They have been there. They have come through decades and have seen much. And now they have a responsibility because they could either make this a negative experience for those who have not, or they can make it a positive one. And just what, and literally what I'm saying to you is that those who are of the remnant can either, they can either bring salt and negativity and venom into what God is doing by planting seeds of discord, by saying, I don't know what's going on. Or they can really create an atmosphere of anticipation and expectation because they have seen God work. And they can bring calm in the camp and say, what well, we saw God do back then, y'all need to be getting ready because God is about to do something exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. And so then I believe it's important that the witnesses of the former glory be addressed because, people of God, the vision of the remnant is critical. Because whenever God allows you to be a part of the remnant, whenever God allows you to have experienced some things, there is a stewardship to that. There are people sitting around you today, and they've seen a lot. They've been around a little longer than most of you, 
And the fact of the matter is the reason why they don't get anxious in episodic situations or they don't, they don't just respond just because everybody else responded because they've been around, they've seen things. They've seen folk come and they've seen folk go. They've seen seasons change. They know that these moments that you're tripping over, that it ain't gonna last forever. They're like people who actually invest in the stock market, who don't get nervous just because you have a down year. Because they've been around, they've seen the stock market go up and down because they got a little life behind them. They know how to wait this thing out. And so if you are the remnant, you have seen God fight battles. You have seen God bring you out of stuff. And now there are people who are nervous and who are anxious and don't know what to do. But somebody who's a part of the remnant ought to look over and tell somebody it's going to be all right. Oh, I, I've seen God do some stuff. And, 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 and like David, I was young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging, begging bread. You see, when you are part of the remnant, that kind of puts in perspective how you view life. Because you either view life optimistically or you view it pessimistically. The reality is it could be one event, but it's all in how you see it. That's how you look at life. A man is sitting on a, on a fence and he's watching cars go by out in a rural area. He's just sitting on the fence watching cars go by out in a rural area until a man, a traveler, businessman, drives by, stops to have a conversation with him. He comes and sits on the fence next to him out of his automobile and says, man, how do you do this all day? You sit here in this solitude and watch cars go by. He said, man, my life is too busy for that. I'm always traveling from city to city and, and I got too much to do. And I know you may not have ever gotten out of where you are now, but man, I just can't imagine just sitting here all day watching cars go by. And the man looked at him and said, well, sir, <laughs> I appreciate your analysis of my situation, but really our lives are not really different from one another. He says, because even though I sit here on this fence and I watch cars go by, you sit in your car all day and watch fences go by. It's all about <laughs> perspective. You see, people of God, that's why the, rem the remnant has to remember that you possess the ability to know what God is getting ready to do. You see, when you are the remnant, you have a sense in your spirit that God is up to something. I'm talking to somebody right now, and I'm making a demand on the spirit of God inside of you because this is confirmation. Because some of you know that's why you've been antsy and edgy and been on the edge of your seat because you just got a sense that God is about to do something. Like in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, don't remember the former things, nor consider the things of hope. Behold, I will do a new thing and now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In other words, your ability to see that God is about to do something. When other people are looking around trying to say, what's going on? I see this and I see that. You're like, you don't realize. I've been walking with God long enough to know that if this environment is happening, God is up to something. You know, it's like the old folk would say, you know, I can tell it's about to rain because my joints are hurt. You'd be like, what in the world are you talking about? I can smell that something's about to happen. You're like, what are you talking about? Because they've been around a long time and they just got a sense. They got some data. They got some downloadables from heaven to let them know something is about to happen. You haven't been having this in your spirit for nothing. God is about to do something. And I believe somebody here got a spirit of expectation. And if God is showing it to you, if God is showing it to you, then you got to have the strength to walk into what he's revealing to you. You must be strong enough so you can move on. See, watch this. Theologian William Channing says, the difficulties are meant to rouse, not discourage. The human spirit is to grow strong in conflict. You see, you cannot afford to be down and depleted in this season. You have every reason to mourn. You have permission to mourn what was. You can only imagine the emotional attachment to the temple that had been destroyed. The relics and the remnants and the emotional attachment to what was is real. For many people, that's the reality. You can't just run past that. It was a significant season in your life. And when you think about something new happening, you oftentimes are wondering about and reminiscing about what was, right? And so you have reason. You have every moment to take a second, get a minute, get a tissue, get a napkin, and literally go head on and mourn. But let me tell you something. You must realize, people of God, that your mourning, listen very carefully to me today, that your mourning needs to have an expiration date. 
your tears need to have term limits. You can't sit here and cry all day long over what was and, and how, how good it was and how much you miss it because people of God weeping may endure for a night, but joy really does come in the morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 4 says there is a time to weep and a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and a time to dance. And listen, you must allow for a time of healing, but you cannot stay in the spiritual hospital forever. At some moment, you're going to have to be discharged, pull yourself together, and move on into your next season. Some people just love lamenting and staying in the place, talking about, I just miss the way things used to be. I just miss, let me tell you, you're going to miss what God is getting ready to do, constantly holding on to something that God is trying to shift you out of. Am I talking to anybody here? That's why God gave them a word. There is a word from a faithful God that you are covered by covenant. I need somebody to shout, I'm covered. Let me help you understand some people of God. God has always kept covenant. And God says, I'm a God of covenant. I won't break covenant with you. And God says, when I tell you something, you can take it to the bank. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it teaches us that God is not a human, that he should lie, not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and not the act? Does he promise and not fulfill? In other words, God says, I am the God of covenant, Israel, and I am keeping covenant with you. I just want you to be strong, and I want you to do this. I want you to be strong, and I want you to work. This is what I want you to do. Your energy cannot be maximized toward what you are building if all your focus is focusing on what you lost. I just said something. You, are, you can't focus on what you're building if all your energy is focused on what you lost. So let's just go ahead on and let's just start building on what God is doing in this season and work this thing out because the reality is the promises of God will come to pass. And somebody here knows if God said he's going to do it, you can take that to the bank. If God promised it and it hadn't hit your house, it's not God's fault. It's your fault because you have not done what you were supposed to do in order that it might come into the place finding you doing your work. Y'all still not hearing this. The glory ain't coming into an incomplete temple. In other words, you got to keep working what you working so that when God sends the blessing, you're ready to receive it. You can pray all day long and believe God that God is going to give you a house, but if if you don't work your budget and you don't work and start saving while you in that apartment, baby, your blessing is just going to stay hung up in the atmosphere. You can believe God all day long that you're going to get in medical school or law school or graduate school, but if you don't work your butt in the library and stop turning up every weekend, then God ain't going to open up no door for your unprepared behind. Preach, Bishop, I'm doing the best I can. There comes a moment you got to do what you got to do and then say, God, I'm ready for what you are ready to pour in my life. Somebody shout, you got to work it. Because faith without works is dead. See, people of God and God says there are some who need a little bit more motivation. And so for those who have these emotional attachments to what was and who yet are having difficulty working it and you have difficulty shifting your energy completely, you know, because what you can do, you can close the door on a season. This is what some of you do. You close the door on a season. That door is closed. Uh-huh. Sure. You close the door with your foot in it. You got a just-in-case spirit. I'm trying to help somebody. Y'all not hearing me. Yeah, you, you close the door, but your foot is just, just, just in case. Just in case I get a little lonely. Just in case. Uh, let me tell you something, baby. You got to forget those things which are behind you. And you got to reach to those things which are before. I'm now pressing toward the mark of the pride. Can I help you understand something? You know what God said he has to do? God says, I'm getting ready to shake the nation. I'm going to shake things up for your life to shape up. Yet, in a little while. See, don't think it's strange when you experience sudden movement of people and things in your life. Sometimes God has to shake things up in your life to bring disruption to the things that you've had emotional attachments to that have not been healthy for you. And so because you did not have the courage to let it go, God had to shake your life up so they would let you go. 
I need you to hear this, people of God. See, you can't allow things and people to have so much control and authority over your life that it begins to cause you to lose what God is trying to bring you into. You got all these negative attachments and leeches in your life. People that are eating up the seed that's going to produce your harvest in your next season. Stop letting leeches limit your growth. What God is trying to do now is shake some things up in your life. That's why I say, Lord, shake me till I walk right. Shake me till I talk right. Shake me till I live right. Shake me till I give right. And people of God, when God gets to shaking you, wealth of the latter is greater. What's to come is about to be greater than what's been. You know something? I want to tell you something. I, have often, I am often fascinated by the psychosis of people who are in the midst of change. You see, change is tough. Change is tough. Let's just be very honest. And when you don't, when something has, has, has changed and you have shifted to another season and it is often you think that you want to go back to what was, but it doesn't work that way. It's like the Etch-A-Sketch. It's like you, you, you're drawing and you make an error and you think, well, maybe if I go back and erase it, but you can't go back and erase a crooked line, you got to shake it. And some of y'all still turning knobs in your life, trying to correct stuff, calling people, trying to, y'all not hearing this here. But God says, let me show, I, I'm trying to, because what I'm going to take you into is not going to look like what you just left. You, you're not hearing this. The children of Israel went through this experience, right? And they went through it in a very profound way during the Babylonian exile. And in Psalm 137, it is chronicled how they lamented and the psychosis of where they are. And it is a corporate grief that they're experiencing because what they have done, they have been taken captive by the Babylonians and they've been taunted because their song is so powerful, right? These are the people of God who came out of Egypt and in chapter 14, when they were delivered in chapter 15, Midian and the women began to sing a song on the other side of the Red Sea because their songs were so powerful they would sing about what God had done and so if you would ever hear Israel not singing that meant something had to be gravely wrong in their mind and so here is the reality by the rivers it says we sat by the rivers of Babylon we sat down and we wept and we remembered Zion. we remembered where we came from we hung up our harps look it's like I hung my harps up I dropped out of school I quit the job. I just stopped being who I was supposed to do. And look at the, if you really study this critically, if you hung up your harps, it's like I resigned, but I hung up my harps on a willow tree. The willow is a tree. That tree, look it up, it represents to, to literally thrive in adverse situations. So how, look at the irony that you would quit and put your instrument of quitting on something that thrives in every season. Wait a minute, let me help you. And the Bible says, for those of us who carried us away, our captors, they mocked us and said, sing us one of those songs you sung in Zion. I saw you dancing and shouting that OHB at 1115. Let me see if you can shout up down this hallway when we tell you we don't need you to work no more. Let me see if we can shout on campus when your money ain't come in yet. I know you run and dance up at OHB, but let me see if you can sing one of those songs right now. And they they said, how can I sing the Lord's song in a strange or foreign land? Because their minds were so messed up. They were so depressed. They had such an incredible mental lapse that they said, oh God, if I forget Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. You see, in other words, that comes a moment in your life. You got to realize whatever you're going through right now is temporary. Somebody needs to declare trouble don't last always. And you can't stay in a place of doubt and discouragement and disillusionment, which comes out of your years of destruction. It's easy to lose focus when what you love has been lost but don't let loss cause you to lose faith and miss what God is about to do in your life because even though you have lost what was and even though you may have an emotional attachment to it what God promises is that in the latter house it's going to be something that's going to separate what you have then and what you're about to get right now I need to drop this in somebody's spirit because some of you need to understand that this one thing that God is about to give you that you didn't 
to have before. Even though you might have had the good job, you might have had the right people, you might have had this and that in your life. Let me tell you what you were missing that you're about to get right now. Now, I know some of you, you shadowed a lot of stuff, but there's one thing I'm getting ready to drop right now going to change the game in your life. Because in this season, God says you're going to have peace. To somebody right now that I, I don't I, I thank God for the doors he opened in another season but I still couldn't sleep at night I, my blood pressure was running up my family was falling apart my children didn't know me so now God in this season I just want to thank you that I'm going to sleep like I never slept before I thank you that I'm going to have peace that passes all oh, understand the Bible said in this house you will have I come to speak peace over your family I come to speak peace over your job I come to speak peace over your matriculation I come and declare that God is about to bring peace over your life somebody in this place shout peace thou will keep thee in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him and people of God for some of you for some people looking at you that don't make no sense to them because they haven't been through what you've been through but some of you been through some stuff you should have lost your mind in that first season some of you been through some stuff you should have been strung out and the fact that I said peace we shot on a car we shot on a house we shot on a new boo and clothes but can you just take a moment and just thank God for peace that's about to hit your house the season that God is about to take you into is so amazing it's about perspective and there's a few things I want to tell you and I know who I'm talking to because I tell you these things and we out of here but the first thing I need to tell you about this new season that you're going into people of God is that you survive for a reason <sighs> you didn't just survive for nothing you didn't survive the destruction of that first season for nothing God kept you alive for something and if God kept you alive for something you ought to be giving God glory you ought to be thanking God that you're not going to blow this opportunity but Lord any way you want to bless me whatever you want to do I'm ready to do it in this season because God if I'm alive I'm alive for a reason any survivors in the house today anybody here that give God glory that you survived more in the last six years than some people survived in the last 16 years Years. can you give God glory that you are a survivor I'm gonna give 15 seconds for every survivor to give God glory for the stuff you survived for all the folk that wrote you off for all the people that said you never have it for all the people that said you'd never be anything but look at you right now you are here not because you are all together you just here because you survived where are the survivors today second thing I'm going to share with you is that the shaking was necessary often when you're going through the shaking you begin to think that this is a demonic attack upon your life it is the first default of every person going through a shaking I'm under attack but this is not of the devil this is God this is God providentially <laughs> positioning his sovereign wheel towards your life to shake some things up in your life yet in a little while I will shake the nations and when God is shaking you it don't feel good because what has been certain becomes uncertain. <laughs> when you're going through a shaking, things you've often relied on now are becoming unreliable. And you're like, Lord, this don't feel good because I don't feel like I'm in control. God, why are you shaking me? Why, what's going on in my life? That's what some of you are going through right now. But the Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you that whenever you are being shaken, it is confirmation that God is about to shift you because there can be no shifting unless there is a shaking. Okay, you're still not getting it. I said there can be no shifting unless there is a shaking I will give you two examples of what I mean one in science and one in the word there can be no shifting is there is no shaking look at meteorology look at the fact that if you have constant 90 temp 90 degree temperature days in order for a cold front to come through and change a season there has to be change in the atmosphere a storm has to come because when cold meets hot there is turbulence in the atmosphere I'm still not getting this and when God is getting ready to shift you into a new season oh that's 
turbulence will hit the atmosphere. It's not a bad thing. It just means that this is necessary for where you're going. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel is told to prophesy to the bones in the valley. The bones are disconnected, dry. The bones are in despair. But the Bible says Ezekiel prophesied to the bones. And when Ezekiel prophesied to the bones, the Bible says a wind hit that valley. And there was a shaking in the valley. And the Bible said bone came to bone. And sinew came to sinew. And flesh came to flesh. Here is the revelation. After the shaking, things will start coming together. Do me a favor, grab somebody by the hand and I need you to shake it like you're about to shake it off and tell your neighbor, I know this don't feel good but tell them after this shaking everything in your life is going to start coming together. Tell them after you get through getting shook by God tell them God's going to start bringing things together in your life. Don't give up on God. Don't walk away from God. Don't lose your mind in the shaking. Can you give God glory? I feel a shaking and I feel a shaking in the atmosphere. But then, while you're being shaken, Bishop, while people are being shaken, other people are infamous at this. They watch you go through a shaking. And from their perspective, you ain't gonna make it. They start chronicling, Lord, you know what so-and-so going through? Oh, Jesus, I don't know. It looks rough and I don't know. And they start writing it. They start chronicling it. They start posting about you. They start having meetings about you. They try to write your narrative based on their perspective. But thank God, your life is not determined by their perspective. Your life is determined by what God said over your life. Here is what I want you to understand. The glory is about to change your story. Tell your neighbor the glory is about to change your story. When the glory of God comes in the latter house, it will be greater than that in the former house. The glory of God is the literal weight and presence of God in its totality. And God says, you thought you saw the glory in the first house. But God said, I had to wait to get you where I wanted you. And now the glory that's about to hit your house is about to change your story. Somebody say, Lord, send your glory. Share it again. Say, Lord, send your glory. Send your glory God to healing comes send your glory God to deliverance come Lord send your glory to doors open up send your glory to everything out of order gets back in order so lift up your heads on your gates and be ye lifted up you everlasting doors that the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory he is the Lord strong he is the Lord mighty in battle so I declare that they lift up your heads on ye gates and be ye lifted it up, you everlasting doors that the king of glory shall come in. Somebody open up your mouth and shout, Lord, send your glory, send your glory. I don't want a job without your glory, I don't want money without your glory, I don't want another open door without your glory. I want your glory. one more thing and I'm done but I need you to find somebody that looked like they survived something I need you to find one person that looks like they've been to hell and back somebody that's contemplated something giving up and walking away and I need you to look at them right in the face and tell them I need to prophesy this word into your life tell them what's coming will be greater than what's been I know you shouted on what you used to have but I want to know what your praise sounds like where God is about to take you I'll give you 60 seconds to give God that radical praise that praise that says eyes have not seen ears have not heard nor has it entered into the hearts of men what God has I want you to stand. What I'm getting ready to ask you to do, don't walk, don't miss this. What I'm getting ready to ask you to do, 
If you're watching this in your office, you're watching it in your home, stand up right there in that bedroom, in that kitchen. Stand up. Stand up. Because what you're getting ready to do right now, you're getting ready to seal this deal. I need everybody who is a person of faith to do this one thing with me right now. I need you just to turn around one time. Look at your neighbor, say, that's what God just did to your situation. He just turned it. Can you give it glory? glory of your ladder the glory of your ladder the glory of your ladder the glory of your ladder will be greater than that of the former and in this place I will give peace and what you're worried about, God says, the silver is mine. The gold is mine. God says, I got you. No anxiety. No more stress. No more worry. God is making your ladder. You've been through too much. In all honesty, some of you can't take no more. That's why God sent this word to just let you know you are shifted. Woo! And I don't care who you are, what you've done, what your situation is, be strong and work it. The part of working it is getting yourself in alignment. And if you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, today is your day to work it. If you strayed away and you're like, I got to get myself back right with God, get back in alignment in every area of my life, this is your day to work it. If you're here today and you say, I'm here, Pastor, and I've been praying for a church home for me and my family, a place where the power of the Holy Spirit moves in its fullness and where the glory of God is moving in this place and the Word of God is relevant, I need you to know it doesn't matter what color you are what denomination see the thing about perspective is you can be in a place and God can speak everything you've been going through in the last six weeks or eight weeks you're like how in the world that happened it's because God knew exactly where you need to be when you need to be there and God is looking for a commitment out of you maybe you're here and you've relocated for school or work and you don't have a covering too much going on man for you not to be covered not to have a spiritual covering away from home what I want you to do right now, we're going to rejoice when every one of you come. I want you to get your belongings and I want you to meet me at this altar right now. I want you to make that decision right now because this was confirmation for you. And we're going to rejoice when you make that decision right now. I need you to move right now. Come on. Come on right now. Church, are you praying? Because I believe that somebody right now, God spoke to you. Come on. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Concerning. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, sooner, come on. Come on, today, today, today. Not tomorrow, today, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, come on. Come on. Come on, come on. You won't always be Yes, he will. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Soon. Come on. 
before I close this out, I want you to hear this. That sometimes people just need some encouragement because sometimes when you when you're out there by yourself and you don't realize that somebody else has been through what you've been through. So I want you to find one person. I want you to say these words to them. Just say, if you need me to walk with you, say, I'll be happy to do that right now. Say, I just don't want you to miss this season, this moment. If you're ready, come on, let's walk together. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's what friends are for. Come on, that's what family's for right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Welcome to your new season. Come on, that's it. Bless you. Come on, church. Thank God as they come. Yes, Lord. Come on, that's it. Bless your heart. It's turning around for me. Turning around for me. I believe. That's it. Bless your heart. Next 60 seconds, I'm waiting on you. Come on. Come on, I see you. Come on, here you come. Come on, there you go. Come on. That's it. Come on, look at that. This will be a season in your life. Listen, and I'm going to really pray over you and let you go, but this will be a season in your life. Come on, that's it. Ah, look at that. Look at that church. Look at that church. Still come, honey. And see, my word is not just to you. My word is to people that are listening, that are eavesdropping on what I'm telling you because it's for them too. A part of this huh, re- Set this revitalization season God has you in. We talk a lot about God releasing me from this and releasing me from that, but this is also going to be a season where God's going to allow some reconciliation to take place. Because you don't throw the baby out with the bath water. There's some things that God wants you to reconcile because there's some strategic and critical relationships you need to go where God is taking you. And you can't let the brokenness and the rubbish cause you to miss what God has for your life. I thank God that you come in here is not by accident. You don't make this decision out of emotion. You make it because God has ordered your steps here to make it from a spiritual place and we welcome you today and we give God glory for this season of your life. Father, bless them now. I thank you for the decision to walk in destiny to be what you've called them to be and where you want them to be. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. I want every one of you to go right down that middle aisle, follow that gentleman with that Bible there. Mount Zion, come on, let's, let's really do it up. Let's really, 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 really thank God. Amen, right this way, right down this middle aisle. Thank you, come on, there you go. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Right down this middle aisle, God bless you. Bless you, Mother. We're going to, amen, bless you. Thank you so much. God is so awesome, and we give him all the glory, and we give him all. It's such a blessing. God bless you. Bless you. I don't know if y'all understand the generations that God connects to this ministry, and there is a blessing tied to that. Amen. You may have your seat. We're going to share in Holy Communion together, and we're going to be blessed today by adoration it's going to come and minister to us during our moment of communion. Father, bless now 
this moment, we thank you for Calvary. We'll never forget the price you pay. In Jesus' name, amen. disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said, Jesus must rise from the dead. Oh 
thank God for Calvary, don't we? It was on that night after supper, the night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed. It was on that night that he took bread and he, he blessed it and he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which was broken for you. Take it all of this in remembrance of me. When he had given thanks, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the New Testament shed for the remission of your sins. As often as you drink this cup, you shall forth the Lord's death until he come again. Drink ye all of this in remembrance of me. There were receptacles to your left and right, and of course, we thank God for you being here today. We pray you have been blessed, and don't forget the prayer call this on tomorrow night. And please don't forget Bible study Wednesday. We'll be outside shaking hands and would love to shake yours. We're so grateful to have you. Have you been blessed today? Amen. We thank God today. Father, we are so grateful and we're so thankful for your word released over our lives today. And we thank you, Father, that your word has spoken so powerfully to us to remind us that our ladder is truly greater. Go with us now. Give us grace in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Amen.